My name is Alex Thompson Sanchez and I'm here today to work on Dragon Hunter with all of you. So if we want to start by warming up a little bit, let's just stretch our arms out, let's stretch our bodies out a little bit. And let's start with a D major two octave scale. I will count to sun. One, two, ready, go. One, two, with me. to a G major scale. Let's play this once together and then I'm going to mention something that I want us to think about when playing our G major scale. Here's four beats and we're in. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> attention that some of you may struggle a little bit with the distance between the third and the fourth finger. The one best tip that I can tell you if you want to find the distance between the third and the fourth finger is that first of all when you look at your hand all of your fingers should be about equally distributed. So that means that there's none of the fingers are all the way together and none of them are too extended. They should all be about an equal length distance apart from each other. The second way that I can tell you to figure out if you're playing the third and the fourth finger right is to play them with the C string, with the open C string. So especially the fourth finger. When you're playing it a little bit off, if you're playing with the fourth finger too close to the third finger, it'll sound off. If you're playing too high, you'll be able to hear that clash. So therefore, when you play this, stop and play it with the C string. And you can tell if you're playing it in tune, if they match. So let's do this one more time, and let's play the, when we get to the C, let's play it with the open C. But we'll keep going in tempo. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Dragon Hunter. We're going to look at measures four through seven. So when we're looking at measures four through seven, the, the number one thing that we want to look at is that the eighth notes are short. The eighth notes are short, but we don't want them to be rushed. So short, but not rushed. So an example of them being short is not too short. We don't want them staccato. We want them articulated. So articulated means that each of the notes will be equally dispersed. So here's a difference between staccato and articulated slash equal. Okay, so let's play from measures four through seven. Here we go. I'm going to count to four and we're going to play through measures four through seven together. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three. time without me counting and the number one thing I want you to focus on is the length of the waist the length of the eighth notes that you're playing remember not too long not too short but just right so let's play measures four through seven 
seven one last time and here we go let's think about the length of the eighth notes one two measure four <laughs> is measures 18 through 21. So 18 through 21, if you look at it, all we see are what kind of notes? Eighth notes. So we want these to be played at piano, as well as played smoothly. So piano and smoothly. We do not want these to be loud and we do not want these to be scratchy. So an example, a good example of this, I'm gonna go ahead and play these four measures for you in a good example. Then we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into what not to do. Here we go. One. Two, just me at 18. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? So you hear that there's still a tone. They're not so quiet. They're not, um, they're not together. But they're articulated. They're smooth. But they're piano. So the way to get that sound is that we want to look at our bow and we want to look at where we play on the bow. So preferably we play a little bit closer to the bridge, so or to the frog. So on the bow we want to play closer to the frog. On the cello we want to look at our strings, okay? We want to look at where these strings are divided. So they're divided by both the bridge and the fingerboard. Now the higher up you play on the fingerboard, the quieter your sound is going to be. The lower down near the bridge you play on your fingerboard, the louder and the scratchier your sound is going to be. So for those of you who may think that you're playing quietly, but are playing closer to the bridge, the sound is going to come out a little bit scratchy and a little bit louder, like so. That is not a good tone right? And it's a little bit louder. You can't get the true piano sound that we want. So when we're playing this, we want to think of, first of all, where we're playing on the bow, which is on the first half with not too much bow. But we also want to think of our bow on the string, and we want to play a little bit further up on the string. So we want to play a little bit near, more near the fingerboard. We don't want to play on the fingerboard, but we want to play probably up on the upper half of where there's a gap between the fingerboard and the bridge. So right about here, and that's where you're gonna get the sweet sound. So we're gonna play this twice together. Look, the first time I'm gonna go ahead and count us through the entire thing. The second time we are gonna play this um, without me counting. And then I want you to just really focus on what I'm doing, kind of watch what I'm doing and try to copy what I'm doing, try to copy the sound that I'm getting. So here's the first time, one, two, Ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good. Now let's do this one last time. I'm not gonna count and we're just gonna practice this. Now, we wanna really make sure that our third finger, our F sharp, is in tune as well. So let's just match my note. Play along and try to match the exact tone that I'm getting on my F sharp. Remember, there's three things we want to think about. Quiet, where we're playing on the bow, and where the bow is playing on the string. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. You did a great job on this part one of Dragon Hunter. Uh, we're going to release one more video of Dragon Hunter where we're going to be working on just a little bit more of the second half of this piece. So I hope to see you there and have a great day.